Good day, all. It's Wednesday. You know what that means. It is What the Hemp Wednesday, where we bring you hip news from around the country and around the world. No, no world today. We're going to stay within the United States. So we're going to start in Maryland. So a Maryland lawmaker is pre-filing a bill that would get uh, legal marijuana on the ballot in 2022. Luke Clippinger, he's a Democrat from Baltimore, has pre-filed the bill. Uh, he wants to put this in front of voters uh, this year on a referendum uh, they're labeling HB1. Uh, this has been first reported by the Marijuana Moment. <clears throat> so uh, the Maryland General Assembly, they get together every January. I think it happens for a couple months, maybe January to about March. And they decide on the fate of all these proposed laws, bills, what have you. Uh, pieces of legislation. So that's about to kick off next month. So this timing is actually pretty good. So the measure would set the stage for uh, retail marijuana, allowing distribution, regulation, and taxation of cannabis, but it does not establish rules for a regulated market or specify a timeline for its launch. Uh, Kleppinger has some positives on his side because he should benefit from the backing of House Speaker Adrian Jones, who in July announced her support for legalization and appointed Kleppinger as a 10-member uh, work group to study these issues. Uh, on the on the opposing side, <clears throat> there are some people within the legislature uh, who want home use to be allowed, and that's not really tied into this so far. Uh, and uh, their proposed date of kickoff is like 2023, like summer 2023. Um, so even if it was voted on in, in November of 22, summer 2023 is quite a long time from now. So uh, they're trying to see if they can speed that timeline up. And we will keep you posted on that for sure. Uh, okay, let's go out to the Midwest. Minnesota cannabis officials say that hemp-derived tinctures and other CBD, uh, CBD and Delta-8 products are illegal because the FDA has not formally approved these cannabinoid products. So the uh, Minnesota, last week in a meeting with the Minnesota Cannabis Association, members of the State Department of Agriculture and the Board of Pharmacy, uh, decided that most hemp-derived products meant for human consumption, whether it be CBD or Delta-8, are against their laws. Uh, a board member of the medical, excuse me, Minnesota Cannabis Association, Stephen Brown, he's also, uh, he owns a, a CBD shop or a hemp shop someplace. Uh, Mr. Brown, what is he saying? Stated that during the meeting, state officials uh, stated that hemp tinctures are illegal and agriculture and representatives uh, call on the added, uh, <clears throat> and an agriculture department representative on the call added that some products Brown brought up on the call would not be a legal food under the state's definition of hemp. I think this is not necessarily talking about smokable hemp. This is talking about things that are actually going in bottles, like tinctures, concentrates, things like that. So according to the Minnesota Cannabis Association, the Board of Pharmacy only considers hemp, seed oil, and CBD flour legal. The 22-page document um, from the pharmacy board stated outlines that the, the agency's position based on hemp reforms that included in the 2018 update of the 2014 Farm Bill. I know it's a mouthful. The, in the document, the board makes its case that the FDA has not approved any common cannabinoid products such as gummies, and therefore they could not be legal. So, where is this keep going? This keeps going. This is crazy. Like, I've never heard any other state talk about this. So, <clears throat> basically, their, their pharmacy board, uh, they're saying ultimately determined that the sale of products containing cannabinoids or THC extracted indirectly or derived from any type of cannabis plant, hemp included, remains illegal under federal and Minnesota state law, with certain exceptions, of course, the pharmaceutical drug uh, Epidiolex. So... You know, that, of course, that's going to be legal. But this is when this happens, like 85% of their products are have to be pulled off the shelves. Um, people are kind of going back and forth about where they stand on that. And we will have to keep you posted because we don't really have positions. We just report the news here. So we do have positions on some stuff. I, I have to admit that. Uh, out West, researchers at Washington State University are partnered with several West Coast uh, universities and uh, a different members of the business community they have received a five-year this group received a five-year ten million dollar usda grant to study hemp and its agricultural benefits so washington state uh received a five-year ten-year usda grant uh partnered with eight institutions across the nation along with industry partners in the hemp uh the industrial hemp association of washington um which addresses the needs of native americans and other rural community businesses and farmers in the four-state West Coast region. 
So um, Washington State itself will receive $1.3 million in grant money. Uh, David Gang, he is the uh, Washington State a, a professor of Washington State University's Institute of Biological Chemistry, indicated that researchers are interested in what hemp varieties are best for uh, Western growers. Know that many farmers are interested in growing crop for fiber and grain. Fiber and grain has a lot of potential. Um, as you know, like we, we eat tons of fiber here in the United States and grains of different kinds, but mostly wheat. Uh, but if we can kind of figure that out and, and, and kind of incorporate hemp, I think that would really help that entire industry. Uh, and the hemp industry, of course. But uh, hemp has a lot of amazing properties, especially the production, uh, producing building materials and feedstock. So uh, it seems like the, the, the focus here is mainly like fiber, grain, and feedstock. There is some other um, uh, focuses. Jeffrey Steiner, he is associate director of the Global Hemp uh, Global Hemp Innovation Center, uh, said the involvement in research by tribal communities and rural communities is critical to, critical to its success. Uh, our project has set out to ensure those opportunities are equal and available and relevant to all kinds of farmers. So, who else is partnering with these guys? The USDA, the D Department of Transportation. Uh, Volt National Transportation Systems Research Center, the federally recognized Tribes Extension Program, Seven Generations. They are a, na a Native American owned firm that specializes in Indian country businesses. Uh, USDA, uh, natural, excuse me, National Agricultural Library, the USDA Western Rural Development Center. So all those people are partnering and they're gonna be doing some really good research on how uh, hemp can be utilized out west, what strains and what varieties grow best there, and how they can help uh, rural and uh, indigenous communities out west. So I think that is really, really awesome news. Uh, and we're going to wrap this up today. It's like the last one of the year, I think, isn't it? Wow, it's crazy. Uh, with eight bills, uh, a few bills worth, worth watching in 2022. Quite a few, maybe seven or eight, you know. Uh, CBD Product Safety and Standardization Act of 2021. So this bill would require the FDA to regulate CBD as a food additive and to issue regulations specifying the maximum amount of hemp-derived CBD per serving, uh, labeling, packaging requirements, and conditions of attended use. So we will keep an eye on that. Uh, the Hemp Access and Consumer Safety Act. This bill would exempt hemp and hemp-derived ingredients such as CBD from... <coughs> This rule and give the FDA authority to establish labeling, packaging requirements for food and dietary supplements containing hemp. That's really big, and we're all waiting on that, FDA. Uh, hemp and hemp-derived CBD Consumer Protection and Market Stabilization Act of 2021. Uh, this latest legislation would seek to make an exception for CBD under the Drug Preclusion Rule uh, under the FD and C Act, which states that material that a material that has already been approved as a pharmaceutical drug cannot be approved as a dietary ingredient. This rule affects both CBD and THC. Uh, as you know, uh, both of these these compounds are are looking for legalization to allow them uh, to be a dietary ingredient because, God, probably about fifty percent of the people who consume these things are consuming them orally. So that's just something to think about. Uh, hemp Economic Mobilization Plan, the, act, uh, the, the Hemp Economic Mobilization Plan Act of 2021. That's pretty cute, H-E-M-P. Uh, this bill introduced in March would require testing of hemp-derived products after processing rather than the hemp flower or plant itself and would aim to keep legal hemp from being seized during transport by requiring that hemp shipments be accompanied by documentation. That is very good because there are a lot of farmers who lost their shirt because local jurisdictions cannot tell between hemp and marijuana. And of course, they're going to side with, oh, it's got to be marijuana. So we're going to sit here and take these people's livelihood, tear their farms down, throw them in the debt. And it's like craziness, you know. Um, and really, for extracts, it only really makes a difference what happens after extraction. Not necessarily kind of before, but, you know, that's more for seeing them. Uh, 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 things that, that are unhealthy that you need to know that before you extract so you know everything that goes into extract or it goes into plant is going to go into extract so if there's chemicals in there or some sort of you know heavy metals you need to kind of know that uh moving on cannabis administration opportunity act uh the the cannabis administration opportunity act introduced in july is a comprehensive reform bill that would legalize marijuana on a federal basis by removing the plant from the controlled substances act and allow states to continue to decide whether to prohibit or to allow cannabis use. 
States Reform Act is sort of the same, um, just introduced in, by a different group of people. Um, some are this, the, the previous one was introduced by Chuck Schumer and Cory Booker. This is Nancy Mace down in South Carolina. So this is the Republican and the Democratic Act, blah, blah, blah. Safe Banking Act, which seems to be dead in the water. Legislation could reform banking and lending for hemp and marijuana companies. Uh, as you know, banks don't really work with our companies, uh, hemp, marijuana, what have you. So no matter how legal or illegal it is, uh, they still won't do it. Um, <clears throat> now, this, 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 this Safe uh, Banking Act was removed from the defense spending bill in early December, dashing hopes for meaningful reform in 2021. Um, and I guess if you live in New York, the hemp packaging uh, in New York, I think we touched on this last week. Uh, they're changing some of the ways that hemp is being packaged in New York and what you can put on a label. If you don't live in New York, that really doesn't mean much. But I guess if you do business in New York, it does. But so you can look that up, Hemp Packaging Act uh, in New York. So that's it. That's all this week. We'll see you next week. Uh, back. Happy New Year. Everybody be safe, happy and healthy out there. Uh, we love you and thank you for your support. Thank you for all your interest in what we're doing here. Um, as always, please like, subscribe, share and comment. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.